there's another form to the game called extensive form. So this is called reduced form where you have this little matrix. And so I think I guess I'll try to take a stab at doing this this way. So extensive form is the game tree. And yeah, so that's it. Yeah. And so how you set it up is that each player, you can run it vertically, you can run it horizontally, it doesn't really matter. And you come to these nodes, which we call a decision node, mm -hmm. and that's where your choices are lined up. So we can go high or low, and then we come to another decision node, and it's the other player choosing high or low. And so if this is Coke, they're going to choose high or low. This, is, this especially lends itself when it's a sequential game, Coke going mm -hmm. first and then Pepsi choosing, but it doesn't have to be. And how you denote if it's a, it's a, if it's a um, uh, simultaneous game, then this is a filled in circle. I don't even think your textbook probably gets into this level of detail, but this is kind of the convention economists use. And so if it's all filled in circles, then Coke and Pepsi are actually choosing simultaneously. And then the outcomes are here at the end. So if Coke and Pepsi both go high, it's 2020. If Coke goes high and Pepsi goes low, then Coke gets them all. And if Coke goes low and Pepsi high, 0, 100, and then 50, 50. All the same information, just given in a different look. And sometimes it's easier depending on the details of the game. Like I said, especially if it's a sequential game, this kind of lays out nicely this way. Okay. But this is harder to do the, like to find the, maybe the dominant strategy. I think yeah. it's a little easier where it's stacked on top of each other, right? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, so that's why we kind of show both ways that they're just, it's the same information, it's the same data, but it's a different technique to be able to try to draw some conclusions from it.